It seems everybody went crazy about strongly typed IDs. Everybody is talking about them, however virtually nobody is talking about a very important point when it comes to strongly typed IDs and that is performance. So don't miss out on this, as in this video we'll put strongly typed IDs to a performance test. Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. Recently we had a lot of discussions on our Code Wrinkles Discord server about performance of strongly typed IDs. And I think it might be useful to share the discussion with you. I know this topic is very popular right now. Just a month ago Milan Jovanovic created a good video about strongly typed IDs. And just a few days ago Amikai also created another video about strongly typed IDs. However, none of them covered a very important topic when it comes to deciding if we want to use strongly typed IDs or not and that is performance. Obviously I think that this topic is very important so here's my contribution to it, Cold Wrinkles always has you covered. But before we move over to performance test strongly typed IDs, let's very briefly understand what this concept is and what the purpose of strongly typed IDs is. What we have here is a very simple product class that has an ID of type GeoID, a name and a price. However, the thing that is important for us right now is the identifier which is of type GeoID. Now, the entire idea about strongly typed IDs is that instead of having these primitives like GeoID or string or integer, we would need to have like our custom type. So let's go on and add here for instance a new class and we'll call this class product ID. So the name of the class itself would be product ID. Now the thing is that we have a type in C sharp that actually allows us to create such strongly typed IDs very easy and that is the record. And the cool thing about the record is that we can simply replace our class definition with this public record product ID, GeoID and value. And that would be our strongly typed ID according to most of the videos or tutorials that you will find out there. So what we need to do to actually implement this strongly typed ID is come here and instead of having this GeoID, this would be a product ID type and it would be the ID. And this clearly gives a lot of intent about what exactly do we want or what exactly this property is, the identifier for what exactly. Now that I want to run some benchmarks, what I will do here is I'll create a new class and I'll call this class type ID service. The purpose of this service will be to only perform some dummy operation. So what I'll do is I'll just provide this very dummy method which returns a product ID, do something with product ID and it gets in a product ID and it just returns it. Remember we just want to do some dummy stuff. Now let's create also a class for our benchmark. I would also like to decorate my class here with some attributes that come from benchmark.net memory diagnoser because we also want to see the memory footprint and the order how we want to order the results from the fastest tool to the slowest. Then we'll need some private fields here, one list of GeoIDs that will hold a bunch of GeoIDs with which we will work in strongly typed identifiers and a new instance of this typed service. Now let's also create a setup for this and in this setup we just want to generate some random GeoIDs. And to do this we'll use this enumerable.range and we'll go from 0 to 10,000 and for each one we create then a new GeoID and everything will be then placed in this list. So by the end the setup is done we'll have a list containing 10,000 GeoIDs. Let's also decorate this method with the global setup attribute so that benchmark.net knows that this is the setup that needs to be performed. And then we'll also need the benchmark itself and the benchmark will be very simple. We just iterate through the list of GeoIDs and we call them the service and this do something with product ID and we provide a new product, a new product ID based on the GeoID that we are currently iterating through. And last but not least, we need to also decorate this with the benchmark attribute so that benchmark.net knows that this is a benchmark that needs to be run. So let's wire everything together, let's remove this console write line and this use this benchmark runner to run our benchmarks in our benchmarks class. I have already configured my application to run in release, so I can just run the application and just wait for the benchmarks to complete. Okay, so benchmarks are ready and for now we just know that this method takes in this time and it does this memory allocation. Obviously to draw some conclusions we need to compare these results to something, but to what exactly? Now records are very cool because they offer us 
out of the box a lot of cool functionalities like structural equality and immutability. And these things are very important when it comes to strongly typed IDs and to value objects in general in DDD. However, if we think a little bit better, what other options would we have in C Sharp besides records to use for strongly typed IDs? Now, records are obviously just a class under the hood. But we also have structs, and structs seem to be very tempting here because structs are value types and therefore they are not allocated on the heap. It means that theoretically they should also yield a better performance. So let's dive into this and try to create a strongly typed IDs using structs and see how they perform compared to the records. So let's create a new strongly typed ID and in this case we'll name this customer ID. Probably that would be the identifier for a customer. Now, obviously we need to change this into struct because this is what we want to test. Let's also add a constructor and this GID value property, which will be get only because we want to have this as immutable. To make sure that we have structural equality implemented here, we'll need to implement this I equatable interface. Luckily enough, Rider will help me with this and I can generate the equality members and I want this value GID to be part of these equality memberships. And now, Rider just generated all the equality stuff. Therefore, let's move over to this typed service and we'll add here also a dummy method for the customer ID. The last thing that we need to do is to come back to our benchmarks and also add a benchmark for this one. That would be really similar to what we have previously. The only difference is that in this case, we call this do something with customer ID, which we know is a struct. So let's run the application again and see the results. And here we have the results. As I expect, this truck strongly typed ID is the first one, so is the fastest. And then we have this record strongly typed ID, which is then comes second. And if we take a look at the difference, we see that the difference is actually huge. Here we have 47 microseconds, seconds, and here we have almost 200 microseconds. So that's basically almost five times better speed and obviously also no memory allocation at all when we were using structs. That's just mind blowing and I know in terms of absolute numbers it might not look that spectacular because we are still in the territory of microseconds. Still using structs proved to be more than four times faster than using records and therefore I think that this is something we can't simply overlook. However, there's still another question that I would like to try out. What if we use classes, a regular class instead of a struct? Would it still perform better than the record or it would perform worse or it would perform exactly the same way? To test this out, the only thing that we need to do is change this struct to be a class and then everything else should behave exactly the same. Now, if we run the application once again, we'll be able to evaluate what happens if we use a class instead of a struct. So we have the results here, and if we take a look, we see that even if you use a regular class, it's still faster than using a record. Obviously, in this case, the difference is not that obvious or not that important, but it's still faster. This result is actually not surprising for me. What's the main difference between a class and a record? Well, obviously the record implements structural equality out of the box, but how does it do that? Well, it uses reflection, and we know that reflection is very costly in terms of performance. So the difference that we see here is not due to the memory allocation, because that is quite the same, but it's due to the fact that in the record we have reflection to get the structural equality, while in the class we implement it manually and therefore it performs slightly better. I know there's also a downside to this because we need to implement manually all the equality stuff and immutability stuff. So these are just things that we need to take care of as developers. However, we are all engineers and we'll probably abstract this out into a base class that we would use throughout all the strongly typed ideas that we might use in our application. So I wouldn't see this as a very big problem. And if we compare that with the performance that we gain, I think that is a fair trade. So the conclusion to this video is obviously that we shouldn't probably use records as strongly typed IDs as they perform really awful even compared to a regular class. And obviously the best way to proceed or the most performant approach would be to use structs as strongly typed IDs. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button and like this video so that others might discover it easier. Also, if you are for the first time on the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are always notified when there is something new on the channel. 
And if you have any question or if you just want to get in touch with me and have a discussion, don't be shy and head over to the comments section of this video and leave your comment. I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.